Hey y'all, what's going on? It is your favorite, favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Marriage Boot Camp, y'all. This is season um, 16, episode 2. Drop the mic. Drop it. Before we get into the review, y'all, if you are a returning subscriber of mine, thank you so much. I damn sure enough appreciate you. Thank you so much. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so. I appreciate you in advance, okay? Before you leave, also let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then make sure that your notifications are turned on so you will know whenever I got new content uploaded. Y'all, um, first of all, I got my Moscato in my, in my little mug. Don't ask me why I think if I put it in this, <laughs> I look like business. <laughs> really ain't nothing in here but pleasure. But hey, shit it is what it is. Anybody watching through the thumbnail, will, <laughs> unless you click on it, y'all, you think is I got coffee up in here. And we gonna leave it at that. Um, <laughs> let's, y'all know what? I don't know about y'all. Y'all give me y'all's opinion. This, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I, okay, hold on. Because I don't want y'all to think that I just like to see the ratchet tree and the drama all the time because that ain't what it is. But I'm going to keep it real with you. That's about 80% of what I really do like. But this, I mean, marriage boot camp so far, it's been kind of boring. Just a little bit, a little bit. I like the people on there. Trust me, I like them on there. But, you know, they're not coming with the drama and, and all this and the other. So, maybe my ratchet side just can't connect with that just yet. But all in all... I mean, it was good. It wasn't bad. Oh, shit. My bad, y'all. It wasn't bad. It wasn't horrible. It was just like, oh, okay. All right. But um, I don't want to hold y'all up no more. Let's go ahead and get into this review, y'all. Uh, hopefully, y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go ahead and get right on to it, y'all. <laughs> I done had too much of this. All damn ready. All right, y'all. So we picking up where it left off last time. With Jocelyn and Ballistic, they in their room arguing or whatever, right? You know she's in a rush to get married. This nigga want to get married on the moon. A.K.A. he ain't trying to get married any goddamn time soon for damn sure. Because, nigga, you ain't going to the fucking moon. You ain't going to outer space. That shit not fit to that goddamn happen. Just then, Dr. Ish walks in, and Dr. Ish judged totally. You know, these niggas got a way of bringing out emotions in nigga. Shit that you, you, you didn't even know that you was actually feeling. They got a way of bringing that shit on up out your ass, right? So Dr. Ish is in there talking with Jocelyn and Ballistic, and he was able to break her ass down because he was like, what's the, what's the deal? What's the problem? What you in a rush to get married for? You... <laughs> What the hell is the problem? She's like, well, nobody's ever, com ever committed to me. You don't understand. I've been through a lot of abuse, a lot of abuse. You don't understand. Which, I get it. You know, she's been through a lot. She said her mom and her daddy ain't never committed to her. And she's afraid that Ballistic ain't gonna never commit to her neither. And if he love her like he say he love her, God damn it, he should marry her. Well, he's like, look here, you can't put a time limit on that. And not only that, you don't do a whole lot of wifey type things to make a nigga want to just marry you like that. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Ish, Dr. Ish was able to like break her ass down and just make her like, you know, like listen and realize he spit some of that, <laughs> some of that goddamn therapist game on her ass. He was like, look here, you can't make your next pay for the mistakes of your ex because then you think they're going to be better than the rest, but ain't nothing like the next for what the ex did to the next. I was like, damn. That ain't how he said it, but he said some real poetic shit. I was like, that nigga spit hot fire. I ain't even, all right now. All right now. All right, y'all. So the next day they had the activity. It was called Broken Record. Basically, they had to list from one to five what they feel are the top blame issues that they each other blames their partner for. Like, I blame you for doing this that makes me feel this way. You feel me? You catch me? Okay, that's what it was. So, of course, first up was the babies, <laughs> Bianca and Choses. Now, Bianca says she blames Choses for not protecting her heart. She says that she was going through a lot. She's one of these type of females. She gets real jealous over social media. Now, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but social media done ruined a lot of goddamn relationships since the launch of this goddamn shit. Social media has ruined a lot of goddamn relationships. And being that they are so young, you know, they're all into social media. If he, like he says, if, if I like a picture, if I comment on a picture, you buck while going crazy. He blames her ass for having fucking PTSD. This bitch done called this nigga phone 
four, five, six hundred times in a row, then gave this nigga PTSD. And I was like, um, now, I'll just say this. I'm, I'll just say this, because you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm, I'm something like a Christian. You know what I'm saying? God is still working on me. I ain't who I used to be. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't who I need to be just yet. So there was a point in time that I was, you know, dating somebody and nigga didn't answer his phone and I called back to back. You know what I'm saying? Oh, nigga, you ain't gonna answer this phone? Okay, oh, yeah, oh you ain't gonna answer this call? Okay, and I don't call back to back. But not, I say, I say it was about like 10. I ain't gonna lie, if I was drunk maybe 20 times back to back, but damn sure not in them hundreds. Nigga, what? Because me, being me, after the 20th call, you don't ask for, I'm, I'm on your dough. Nigga, I know you heard me calling your goddamn ass. That's just me, though. But like I said, I'm saved now. I ain't the person that I used to be no more. I drink my wine out of a mug now. I'm saved. You know what I'm saying? God is working on me. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But um, they also bring up the issue of um, her being pregnant. Now, Bianca says that she was pregnant by Chosen three times. Twice, they decided to terminate. The last time, she said she miscarried. Now, he says that he thinks that she lied about being pregnant just to get his ass to stay. Now, he was like, you know what I'm saying? Just some of the stuff you said, it just didn't make sense. And I felt like you were just saying stuff just to piss me off or just to get me. Because he said, what did he say? Sometimes, one time she was pregnant, she was like, uh-huh, yeah, nigga, you stuck with me for the rest of your life. And whoop, whoop, yada, yada, yada. So he feels like she was lying, making that shit up. She was like, look here, dude. I ain't lied about the shit. Now, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm going to believe any woman if she sit up here and say she pregnant. You don't know nothing about what did you don't know so i ain't finna sit up here and take nobody goddamn side but if she did say that try to get this thing that's fucked up that's real fucked up that's all i'm saying about that though try then johnson want to come jump her ass in bianca you gotta stop being so toxic you you real toxic i was i was kind of like oh oh miss pot how about you sit your pot ass down and let the kettle <laughs> finish doing what she doing now because uh, I guess any, I believe anybody would tell you, you are the toxic one between you and Ballista's relationship. Don't get me wrong. You my nigga. You my dog. But bitch, you the one toxic in your relationship. So go ahead, Miss Pot. Go on, sit down and let them work the thing out, girl. Jocelyn and Ballistic are next. Now, he blames her for communication. And of course, she blames him for holding on to his past. Something about he lost his friend some years ago. And because of that, that makes him afraid to commit and marry her. I don't get the connection between the two, but hey, nigga, you like it. I love it. It is what it is. Styles P and Ajwa next. They said that their um, biggest issue are trust and communication. Now, again, this was each couple had to, you know, list five things, but I'm just talking about what their number one issues was. You know what I'm saying? You won't see what it was exactly. Google that shit. But, um... Um, like I said, Styles P and Ajwa was trusted communication. Now, Misha Lay and Stu, Misha Lay says he has a certain type and she feels like she's not his type. Stu says he feels like he's a pawn star, meaning P-A-W-N, like she's always trying to pawn this nigga off on somebody else. By you steady saying you feel like I'm attracted to somebody else and you feel like I'm attracted to a different type, like... What the hell is really going on with that? Like, y'all, I'm sorry. Oh, and last week, it was, I couldn't think of who that was. That was Color Me Pink. That's who I first heard say that she felt like Mich Michelle and Stu wasn't a couple. And for sure, after this second episode, I'm damn sure convinced that y'all, they not together. They putting on for the doggone camera. I don't know, she probably got an album or something coming out and she trying to promote for it. But them niggas ain't together no goddamn real relationship. They not. Now, next up was Shawnee and CeeLo. Now, Shawnee says her biggest, well, her and CeeLo, their biggest issue was communication. Now, y'all know CeeLo is an old, deep, poetic, neo-soul, half-alien, half-Buddha, 
ass tight, thuggish, ruggish, bone ass nigga. So when he talks, you really have to listen to him. He talks like a pimp to me. I'm sorry, but he talked like a pimp because he talks so fast. He talks so slow, but it's so fast that you got to be woke to understand what this nigga's saying. Like you really need to pay attention. Because he really be spitting hot fire when he talk. You just got to understand what that nigga saying and listen to what he's saying and be like, oh, word. Oh, yeah. So he spit some old poetic shit that he said to her, like, like, I love you more than I love myself. And, and I blame you for that because I can't reach the who I need to be because I need to be that and whoop de whoop And with the yada, yada, yada to bing, bang, boom. I was like, wow. Nigga, tell me more. Y'all, that nigga was so deep, he had Styles P over there crying. Nigga, the thug nigga was crying. He was like, I feel that dude, though. You know what I'm saying? To say you love somebody more than you love yourself. Like, that's some next level shit, you know? Like, I feel that dude. Like, he hurt, and he hurt, and I feel that hurt. Like, I was like, wow. Nigga, tell me more. Y'all, so later, everybody is chopping it up. Kicking back, chilling. Um, Johnson points out to Stu, why are you and Michelle ain't never together? Out of all the couples in here, y'all the only two that ain't never together. He says that she likes her space and he wants to respect her space. She's saying that, you know, I, I just like having my space and to be by myself. Bullshit. Bullshit. It's real weird. I don't get that. So later on, all the guys is chopping it up. All the girls is chopping it up. Now, Johnson asked Bianca, did she lie about being pregnant? And of course, she said no. She's determined that she wants to make the relationship with her and Chosen's work by any means necessary. On the other hand, you got Chosen's over there chopping it up with the dudes. He like, you know what I'm saying? Um, This bitch is crazy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how much more longer I can take this shit because this bitch got my nerves bad. Nigga need to smoke just to deal with her ass. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know if all of this is worth it. To me, in my sanity, I don't know if this goddamn shit is worth it. So next up, y'all, they had the rap battle. I love when they do the rap battle on there on the hip hop uh, marriage boot camp because it's always so fun. Everybody got up there and they did real good. Like Bianca and Chose just did good. Um, Misha Lay and Stu, Stu actually had bars that he was spitting. He did good. Styles P, of course, he dropped hot fire. CeeLo came out there, dropped some knowledge and some hot fire. The cutest one to me, though, was Shani, or Shani. She, girl, she remind me of somebody old goddamn mama up there trying to rap. She was so cute. She was really trying. It was real doggone cute, though. Y'all, so afterwards, everybody is in the kitchen chopping it up and chilling. Johnson asked going to come out the side of her neck and say that Ballistic ain't never gave her head. At least I think that's what she said, the way it was blurred out. That he ain't never gave her head. That then she started saying something about she stand up and she squat over bitches and piss. I don't know what the hell she was saying. She was standing up on the dog on chair, and that's when dog on ballistic was like, "See, this is the disrespectful shit that I'm talking about right here. You don't act like no queen, but you want a nigga to wife you up. Like, what is this? Everybody just kind of sitting back looking like, what the fuck is going on here? What is this bitch doing? Why is she grabbing a pussy like that? Y'all, later on, it's a jury of their peers, right? And so, of, co of course, Judge Lynn Tola comes out. She puts everybody in their doggone place, make everybody feel bad. You know, not feel bad. You know what I'm saying? You know how she break their ass down. Well, it came to Jocelyn and um, Ballistic. So, Judge Tola asked Jocelyn something. And you seen Stu kind of perk up. I didn't think nothing of it. But you did see him kind of perk up. That's when Misha Lay was like, look, see? See, this is what I'm talking about right here. He just gets up when he sees a beautiful woman. He's attracted to beautiful women. Everybody was like, girl, what in the fuck are you talking about? It was embarrassing. She embarrassed that nigga, and I felt bad for his ass. Because literally, I just seen him like kind of sit up and adjust like so he could hear, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, like juice. Let me hear what the hell is going on. He wasn't doing it in no disrespectful way towards her. But y'all, me, Chalet, they not together. 
they not together and and i can't wait to see who the couple is that they say is not actually a couple because it's gonna be michelle and us so y'all later on that night ballistic is chopping it up with Stu, and Stu was like look here i i feel embarrassed that she would even put me on the spot like that like i just want you to know ain't shit going down ain't nothing like that ballistic is like you know you just gonna have to talk to her let her know how you really feel Stu was like i'm sick of this shit i'm sick of telling this big head hold and i love her that i want to be with her and all of a sudden the other for her to just steady try to push me off on other women now, uh, uh, later on that night, when him and Misha Lay are in the room, Stu actually tells Misha Lay, like, how would you feel if I were to do that to you? Like, why would you even call me out like that? Like, the shit was embarrassing. Her whole thing is like, I feel like you have this type, and this is what you want, whoop -de -whoop. I don't believe they asked for a goddamn second. Y'all, right before it end, you got Chosen and Bianca. Now, Bianca, baby, you getting on that nigga nerves. He getting sick of your ass. I can see it. She, they young, and right now she's acting like a spoiled, immature girlfriend. And sooner or later, he gonna be sick of that shit. He gonna tell you, deuces, I'm out. I can't do nothing else for your ass. I'm sick of this shit. I'm gonna be the hell over it. Y'all, this episode is okay, but I am ready for the next episode because Jocelyn is literally gonna show her ass while her man is over there in the room next door. Baby. Couldn't be mine. That's all I want to say. But her, uh, look here. If it was anything that I missed, y'all already know, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.